day everyone welcome back to professor j vlogs again this is professor j polycarpio and for today we will be having another um discussion regarding tourism research command so today i am going to tackle and answer the question what makes tourism research a difficult course and how to overcome your fear in to conduct research so um alam naman natin na lahat ng estudyante no Lectures in tourism management, but everybody who's uh, enrolled in any baccalaureate program or any bachelor's program should undergo um, a research, no? should undergo their undergraduate research. <clears throat> um, one of the, the key elements on why um, schools or, or universities and colleges are actually conducting research is to preserve knowledge and uh, to distribute it. No? And, and share it with uh, the people in the academy. Kasi um, ang value talaga ng research is to answer the questions or answer or search for the unknown. Kasi hindi naman pwede na kung ano yung alam lang natin today, yun na lang. No? So there's, uh, sabi nga nila, education is a continuous learning process and research is a very important tool for us to uplift our learnings you know, and for us to improve our um, subject matter expertise. And in our have the so-called undergraduate research for tourism management or also known as tourism research. Marami siyang pangalan sa iba't ibang schools. No? If you, you may be either, you, you either be enrolling tourism research methods and techniques or methods of tourism research. Some would say tourism research one and two. No? In some schools, one semester lang ang research. In some schools, it's two semesters. Uh, but uh, the bottom line here is the same lang naman yung activities na ginagawa, which is to conduct um, a full-length uh, tourism research or gusto natin tawagin na thesis. Okay? So, marami yung estudyante yung natatakot pagdating dito sa, sa course na to kasi um, it's a matter of life and death yung tanga nila kasi hindi ka pwedeng graduate kung wala kang research na nai-contribute sa program mo. And because of that, maraming estudyante yung natatakot yung enroll itong subject na to. But um, with this topic, I hope, or with this discussion, I hope makatulong ako para mabawasan yung fear ninyo sa, uh, sa subject na ito. No? Kasi napakaganda ng tourism research kung kaya kung uh, matutunan natin siyang mahalin o matutunan natin siyang maging uh, part ng ating discipline. Okay? So, first and foremost, I want to know, ano-ano ba yung kinakatakutan natin? So, what are the different fears? No? What are your greatest fears? Some people would say, um, they are afraid of heights. Diba? I'm afraid of heights. Uh, takot ako pag nasa mataas na lugar. And some people will say, uh, I have uh, an explainable fear of snakes, um, spiders, uh, fear of enclosed spaces or claustrophobia. So, yung fear kasi talaga, it's, it's a human reaction or a, it's, it's, a, it's a natural human reaction on things. And hindi natin siya pwedeng kontrolin. So, meron talagang... Um, tawag dito, meron talagang bahagi ng, uh, ng ating physiological aspect na kapag meron tayong nakikita or meron tayong na, na encounter na isang happenings that would cause us fear, nagtitrigger talaga siya. So that's really normal. And um, come to think of it, yung research is, can be considered as something that everybody should be fearful of. Why? Kasi um, meron mga tao na sinasabi nila that they are really afraid of what they don't know or what we call as the fear of the unknown. Okay? And that's also normal. Okay? Human beings tend to, to be fearful of something that they don't know, something that is, that is very uncertain to them, something that is vague or something that is confusing. Um, it's an it's 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 a psychological reaction of person, psychological reaction of people, 
to uh, defend, themselves, defend themselves on things that are uncertain to them or something that is uh, questionable to them. However, we can overcome this kind of fear. How? Simple answer is to conduct research. Okay? Kasi nga po, research is scientific method of knowing the unknown. Okay? Kaya po tayo nagko-conduct ng research kasi gusto natin malaman or masagot yung mga katanungan natin. Okay? At malinawan yung mga hindi natin naiintindihan. Okay? Yun po yun. Okay? So, kung titingin natin siya sa konteksto ng turismo, um, people would say, ah, sa tourism naman kasi napaka napakaliit lang ng sakop ng research kasi tungkol lang yun sa travel, tungkol lang yun sa tourist behavior. Um, I beg to disagree because like what I have discussed from my previous lecture rather is mayroong bahagi ang turismo sa halos lahat ng disiplina. It is a multifaceted discipline. It is a multidimensional uh, field of study. Kasi ang tourism, nakikita yan sa business. There's tourism management. There's tourism in public administration. There is tourism in psychology, particularly the tourist behavior and the host community behavior. Meron tayong konsepto ng uh, tourism as, uh, as part of law, particularly legal policies, no? tourism policies. Kasama yan dyan. Um, marami pa, sobrang dami. No, I think bawat areas ng, ng iba't-ibang discipline, even engineering, even um, architecture, kasama rin po yan sa areas ng tourism study. So, kung, kung, hahanap, kung, kung tayo ay gagawa ng isang research, napakarami po natin pwedeng maisip na topics that will involve tourism um, as part of it. So, there are a lot of studies conducted, particularly in tourist behavior, tourism impacts, and sustainability. Meron mga researches about um, travel preferences. Meron mga research, like right now, particularly yung mga uh, uh, related sa pandemic, no? Yung mga problems that are related to the pandemic. Say, for instance, unemployment of the rise of unemployment of airline workers, of, of hotel workers. So, nag, nagagawa po natin yan ng mga research studies. And yung mga researches po natin ngayon is no longer um, a, research, a research that describes what's happening. But rather, um, ako po ay advocate talaga ng, at ng action research. So, I am more into uh, the concept of knowing. And then after knowing, recommending solutions to the problem. Kasi yun naman talaga dapat ang goal ng research. Maggamit siya to researches. Okay? Kasi hindi pwede na ang research mo ay tapos mo na, after mo matapos yung thesis mo, napabookbine mo na, nasubmit mo na sa advisor mo, at pakukolektahin mo na lang ng alikabok sa bookshelf. Um, it's not a good output. No? It's, not, it's not a good uh, measure of output if your research will just be stuck inside the shelves of, of your library. Kailangan na you utilize yung research. Kailangan na to share, kailangan na pa-publish, kailangan na i-present. Okay? So, for us to avoid the fear of the unknown, we have to conduct research. Okay? And sabi ko nga, this is actually a good example. This is a, it's a real example. You will only be afraid of this, the panel presentation for your research, if you did not take this, the classroom lectures, seriously. Why? Maraming studyante ang nagsasabi na um, pagdating ko sa thesis, uh, hayaan ko na lang kung uh, saan ako dadali ng grupo ko. Okay, may mga ganyan. No? May mga studyante na na uh, kung, ano yung, kung ano yung topic na available, yun na lang. Okay. May mga estudyante naman na uh, mapagpursigit talaga na gusto nila yung research talaga nila, yun yung mag, mag push through. There are some students na kahit first year pa lang, nag-iisip na ng research topic nila pag, pag tumungkong sila ng third year or ng fourth year. Um, 
there are some students na okay lang, di ba? Research in it, 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 it shall come to pass. Parang ganyan yung concept, it shall come to pass mentality. But um, definitely, if you really want to go, to create a good research, you really have to take the lectures seriously. Why? Kasi sa lectures, through different lectures, particularly from the macro perspective, yung first year ninyo, yung world tourism, yung Philippine tourism, yung tourism sustainability, travel operations, at kung ano-ano pang mga professional subjects, even English, even Filipino subjects, mga general educations. If you take those things seriously, then you can actually uh, find your core competency para yun ang maging focus ng inyong research topic. Hindi yung kung kailan kayo nag-enroll ng research, dun lang din kayo mag-iisip ng kung anong gagawin ninyo na topic. Or worse, iaasa nyo sa advisor yung topics na bumagsak na lang para sa inyo. Um, isa yan sa mga hindi ko tinotolerate as a research advisor, no? Um, hindi ako payag na kung ano yung research topic na binigay ko or research topic na sa tingin ko bagay sa kanila, yun na ang gagawin nila. Um, it's more like a trap rather than a blessing. Kasi kung yung topic ko ang ibibigay ko sa estudyante, well, uh, what's gonna happen is hindi yun yung core competency nila on their research. Hindi yun yung kanilang research interest. So, ang mangyayari, may hirapan sila along the way. Unlike kung gusto mo yung ginagawa mo, unlike na kung gusto mo talaga yung topic na pinag-aaralan mo, and then yun yung ginagawa mo research, mas mabilis mo magagawa yung research study mo. And it's not a race, okay? It's not a race. Research is not a race. Hindi to, hindi to dahil um, sa lahat yung semester lang ang research, kailangan uh, by this time, tapos na ako, by this time, ganito na yung nagawa ko, wala pang ganun. Okay? Um, research takes time. And hindi siya pwedeng madaliin. Para siyang art. Para siyang isang artwork. Um, hindi mo pwedeng madaliin yung pagkagawa. Kung gusto mo ng dekalidad na produkto o dekalidad na masterpiece. Okay? So, meron ba tayong tinatawag na fear? Okay? Is there a fear of, this, of writing research papers? Yes, there is. Okay? There are two two examples. One is the writing anxiety and the other one is the writer's block. When we talk about writing anxieties, ito yung um, gusto kong magsulat pero hindi, hindi ko magawang magsulat dahil baka kung, an, kung ano yung isulat ko ay pangit sa pandinig o sa perspective, perspektibo ng ibang tao. Um, maraming ganyan na na estudyante. Maraming estudyante yung natatakot na pag ito sinulat ko sa chapter 1, ganito, tapos nabasa ng advisor ko or ng, ng panel, uh, natatakot ako kasi baka mamaya malian. Okay? Again, um, as a research advisor and also a researcher, uh, an academic researcher also, um, wala pong perfectong research. There's no perfect research. There is no perfect manuscript. There is no perfect chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. It's just up to you. It's just up to your perspective on how are you going to explain your perspective to the expert panelists. And it's also it also matters that you are open during the time that they will be criticizing your work. Kasi um, when you present your research, it's it's a two-way street. You give the information and you receive the feedback. Eh, hindi ka makaka mag hindi ka makakaumos dun sa, sa sa part na yon kung sa pamamaraan ng pagsusulat pa lang sa panahon ng susulat pa, pa lang ay iniisip mo na kung ano ang sasabihin ng ibang tao sa papel mo. So that's writing anxiety. So um Mahirap siyang kalabanan yun, especially kung yung tao ay medyo, medyo low moral in terms of writing. But um, through different exercises, through different through proper mentoring, through proper coaching of the, the research advisor, na-overcome lang siya. 
the other one is a writer's block. When we talk about writer's block, ito yung, kumbaga, tinatawag natin na may mental block tayo. Okay? Ano may na may mental block tayo? Wala tayong ma-incept, di ba? There are times, there are moments na tumatahimik tayo, wala tayong iniisip at hindi natin alam yung gusto natin sabihin or what. Um, itong writer's block, totoo po ito. Okay? Um, when you do researches, there will be times that you will just be staring on a blinking cursor kasi meron kong gustong sabihin pero hindi siya lumalabas into words. Hindi siya natatranslate into words. The best thing that you have to do when you encounter writer's block is to take time for yourself. Relax, rest, and stay away from the computer. For at least, it depends, a day, a day or two, hindi masamang um, iwan mo muna yung research work mo. Okay? As long as alam mo naman sa sarili mo na nagawa mo yung, yung time bago, ka, naka, bago na karoon ng writer's block. Pero, um, huwag naman sana na paulit-ulit na may writer's block kasi for sure, uh, yung iba doon, hindi na talaga siya writer's block. Baka dala na talaga sa ng anxiety mo. Okay? As, uh, as a, dahil required yung subject yung pagsusulat ng research paper. Okay? So, existing po yan. No? Meron tayong writing anxieties and writer's block. What are the sources of fear to write research? Eh? To write research? So, bakit ba tayo, saan ba nanggagaling yung mga takot natin pag tayo yung nagsusulat ng research? Number one, self-doubt. Okay? Um, if a student researcher feels that they cannot write research, okay, and they think about it, uh, most of the time, definitely the result is they will not be able to write a research. Bakit? Kasi kung natatakot ka, o nagsisimula yung, yung, yung takot sa sarili mo, o nagsisimula yung pang, ano tawag ito, uh, yung doubt mo sa sarili mo na kaya mo gawin yung isang bagay, definitely hindi ka makakatapos, or hindi mo mararating yung finish line. Hindi mo magagawa yung finish product mo. Okay. Second is poor grammar. Students would say, sorry sir, I cannot write the research perfectly because I don't have the, the proper learnings, particularly on grammar and sentence construction or whatever it is. Um, hindi na siya problema at this time, at this point in time, kasi meron na tayong mga translators. So kung gusto mo, mag-google mag translate ka, di ba? hindi mo sa kayang English eh. Or, kung hindi naman ganun ka-accurate, you try to write okay, on a blank word document and um, use Grammarly or any um, applications or tools na pwedeng plug-in na mailagay doon sa, sa word. Kasi ako, I'm, I'm actually using Grammarly when I write researches kasi, or any documents kasi it uh, automatically corrects what, whatever na words or phrases na mali dun sa sentence ko. So, uh, yun po, no? So, better some, uh, tawag dito, some tools or apps din. So, madali na po siya. And, poor grammar, um, siguro at, at tertiary level, dapat hindi na siya excuse kasi there, there are people na, or you have, you have undergone a lot of, a lot of English subjects, a lot of, Filipino subjects, and um, sa akin lang ha, personally, I'm pretty sure may napulot ka particularly on subject word agreement, di ba? Um, yung mga basic, alam na natin yun. So, as long as kaya mo siya, sa yung basic basic uh, sentence construction, makakapagsulat ka ng research kasi hindi naman nire-require ng, ng ng research paper na kailangan um, sobrang lalalim ng mga salitang gagamitin mo. Actually, kung ano yung mas mabababaw na salita, yung mas madali itindihin, yun dapat ang ginagamit sa research. Hindi ito palalima ng, ng terms. No? So, yun. Um, fear, source of fear number three is too many possible topics. Or sometimes, no topics at all. Walang maisip. Diba? Students would say, sir, I can I can provide at least five 
no five research topics that's good already uh, some students would say sir mahirap makabuo kahit isang topic parang imposible na is na ang isang estudyante na nag-aaral sa isang disiplina o sa isang field of study cannot come up with a question about the field of study that they are into okay so lagi kong sinasabi sa mga students particularly yung mga nag-undergo sa akin ng research there it is very impossible for you not to come up with at least one good topic for research kasi sa dami ng pinag-aralan mula first year hanggang third year hanggang fourth year meron at merong tanong sa sarili mo meron at meron meron at meron kang tanong sa sarili mo particularly to your industry na hindi pa rin nasasagot tawag ito it's a halimbawa gusto mong pag-aralan kung bakit yung isang destination ay biglang sumikat because of social media lang okay social media as a tool for the promotion of this this x and y destination di ba dun pa lang meron eh that's already a research topic that's already a question uh, that's already a research question o kaya gusto mong malaman bakit napakaraming um foreign tourist sa ganitong hotel compared kay ganitong hotel. Okay? Comparative studies. Or kung gusto mo naman is bakit sinatsaga ng Pilipino ang buffet setup compared sa mga uh, tawag dito, casual dining setup. Okay? So, behavior naman yun, consumer behavior. Pasok pa din siya sa tourism studies. And the rest goes on, no? the list goes on. Sobrang dami, sobrang dami ng topics. So it's really impossible for you not to, to come up with just one. Um, it's actually one of the practices that I am doing with my classes is on the second week of our research class, I am asking my students to produce at least 30, as in three zero topics, possible research topics para um tawag dito para meron silang pagpipilian it's it's not a direct research topic it's not uh, a, uh, a very specific research topic but rather um ginagawa ko siya na activity na kung gusto mo yung sobrang general tapos paliliitin natin ng paliliitin during the consultation so it's learning by doing okay so too much possible topics, napakarami. Or minsan, wala nga daw. Okay? Next is inability of you to know your core competencies. Sa tourism studies, may mga core competencies din tayo. Hindi naman pwede na lahat alam mo or lahat gusto mo, lahat gusto mo sakop mo. Hindi pwede yung jack of all trades na sir of nanta dito. So ang nangyayari po dyan is Dapat kung nung first year ka pa lang, alam mo na na gusto mo sa airline industry. So your research topic will focus on airline industry kasi yun yung interest mo. Or your competencies fall on F&B or food and beverage. So your research will fall under restaurants, kitchen operations, or whatever. Doon, di ba? Or ikaw yung tipo na gusto mo yung aralan talaga yung mga policies uh, sa tourism. So tourism policies, you know, tourism policy planning, legal aspects. So, meron at meron kang favorite subject or meron na meron at meron kang favorite major subject mo sa college na pwede mo maging focus and then doon makukunin yung research interest mo. Next, there's a vague instructions. Sometimes it's not the student's fault. Okay? It's, not, it's not the student's fault. Kung bakit na-develop yung fear nila on research. Sometimes it's the instructor okay? or the research advisor or the the, the research instructor uh, mismo. Kasi kapag malabo yung instruction sa bata or it's quite confusing for them, it becomes unknown for them. So they have to know it first before they proceed on the research process. So my advice to all the instructors who's teaching research is to be very, very clear, precise, and accurate with the information that you're going to discuss to your students. Kasi hindi pwede na sasabihin mo, okay, you may chapter one. But these are the contents of chapter one. You have background of the study, you have your rationale, you have your this, this, and this. Kung ganun lang yung format ang ibibigay mo, that's not 
that's not mentoring that's not um uh, coaching or that's not even advising that level um kung ikaw ay research instructor this goes to the, to, to my fellow research instructors you have to elaborate yung um instruction mo sa estudyante kasi unang-una sa lahat ikaw sa sarili mo alam mo kung gaano kahirap sumulat ng isang research wag mo nang pahirapan yung estudyante na isipin pa yung instruction bago siya makagawa ng proseso. Okay? So, to also, uh, as well, for the students, kung hindi nyo naintindihan or vague masyado ang instruction ng teacher or ng professor ninyo, please learn how to ask. Okay? You always have the right to ask. Kapag nagtanong ka, then makaklaro yung concern mo. Sometimes it's your concern is also the concern of your fellow classmates. So if you if you have the the um, uh, if you are in the right mindset to ask questions, then go and ask. Probably it can answer not just your question but also your classmates questions. Okay? So, yun. And then the last is criticisms. Marami ang natatakot na mapulaan or masabihan ng may mali ang paper mo, kailangan mong i-revise yung paper mo, or your paper doesn't have, uh, or is not uh, interconnected, every chapter are not interconnected to each other. Uh, you have to consider revising the paper. Yes, masakit, or yes, nakakatakot, or yes, hindi ko kaya na isipin na mali yung ginawa kong papel. Okay, that's normal. Okay, that's life. That's basically how life goes. Um, criticisms are not rejection. Okay, let me tell you this. Criticisms are not rejection. So, kapag binigyan ka ng criticism or ng, ng, ng comments tungkol sa gawa mo, hindi ibig sabihin nun, nire-reject ka na or tinatanggihan na yung gawa mo, or umu-oppose or kinakalaban yung ginagawa mo. Uh, that's uh, how things should go. Kasi you are, you are actually presenting a research paper, therefore the panel has the right to comment, they have the right to react, they also have the right to uh, give commendation no, to your paper. So, Ganun talaga yun, no? You just have to have an open mind uh, on the time that you're going to present your research. And hindi, rin, hindi yan natatapos sa presentation of research. Kasi when you publish your researches on uh, online journals, or talagang hindi pa doon natatapos yung critiquing. Kasi meron pa tayong mga tinatawag na, uh, tawag dito, uh, double blind paper evaluation, etc., etc. Ang dami pa niyang dadaanan, yung editors. So, maraming kritisismo ang dadaanan ng papel mo. You always have to go back to step number one, or to, to my reminder number one kanina, which is, there is no perfect research paper. Okay? Tandaan niyo yun. There is no perfect research paper. Kahit ako, uh, na nagtuturo ng research, kahit yung teacher mo na nagtuturo ng research, hindi perfecto ang research niya. Okay? So, darating ang panahon na maiintindihan mo na bakit siya hindi perfecto at ano yung mga inputs ng panelist para ma-perfect mo siya or somehow ma-close to perfection mo yung papel mo. Okay? So, how do we overcome the fear of research writing? So, number one is you turn off your inner critic. Okay? Simulan mo sa sarili mo. Kung nagda-doubt ka sa sarili mo, turn it off. Kung nagda-doubt ka na hindi mo kaya magsulat, turn it off. Kung uh, nagsasalita yung tao sa utak mo na, alam mo, wala naman pahinat na niyan, papasa ka pa rin naman kahit hindi ka magsulat, turn it off. Okay? Kasi in, at the, uh, in the first place, you are there, you are enrolled on the subject, particularly on tourism research, hindi para umasa sa kagroupmates mo, hindi para ikaw yung magluto ng pansit kanton during 
uh, during your brainstorming session, hindi para ikaw yung magpaprint at hindi rin para tumayo during the panel defense. Nandyan ka para matuto. Nandyan ka para malaman yung konsepto ng research at mas mapalalim yung alam mo dun sa research interest mo. Okay? Take that as an opportunity and turn off your inner critics. Okay? Second, know your personal and professional strengths and weaknesses. So sabi ko nga, you have to focus on your core competencies. When we talk about core competencies, yun yung research interest mo. No? Doon ka magaling. Magaling ako sa tour guiding na subject. Eh. Bakit hindi ko kaya pag-aralan kung ano ba yung mga current behavior ng mga na mga tour guides in terms of tip giving, di ba? Yung current practices in terms of tip giving. Um, kaya ay sabi mo, mahilig ako sa, sa tour operations, eh. bakit hindi ko kaya pag-aralan yung possible tourism products on this province na pwedeng i-integrate dun sa, sa tour packages, okay? Et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so know your personal, not, that's professional strengths. Some, you also have to know your personal strengths. Ano yung personal strengths? Um, ito yung mga kalakasan mo na hindi siya related naman sa course mo pero makakatulong siya kasi uh, pansarili mo siyang kalakasan. No? In the sense na, limbawa, uh, ako yung tao na kaya kong mag, uh, mag-type ng isang buong chapter in just 30 minutes. So, yung competency mo na yun, pwede mo sabihin sa mga ka-group mates mo. O, ako na lang magta-type niyan pag nagmamadali na tayo. So, nakatulong ka pa sa group mates mo. Or, ikaw yung tipo ng, ng, ng ka-group mate na uh, makapalimuka, sanay sa tao. So, pwede kang gamitin during the interview sessions, di ba? Sa, sa, sa data gathering ng inyong research. Or sa survey. Okay? So, doon ka lalagay. Okay? Siyempre, kung alam mo yung strengths mo, dapat alam mo rin yung mga weaknesses mo para yun yung sasabihin mo sa groupmates mo na, oy, hindi ko kaya yan. Mahina ako dyan sa part na yun. Ah, sin- sinong pwede gumawa niya? Okay? Tip number three, remember that your research is more important than your temporary anxiety. So, kung kinakabahan ka, nag-iisip ka ng problema mo, naisip mo yung problema na, na nakakatakot yung pagsusulat ng research na to, isipin mo, mas mahalaga ang research na sinusulat mo kesa dyan sa nararamdaman mo. Okay? Um, sabi nga nung isa sa mga friends ko na nagpaturo ng research, um, ang research daw, kailangan, pag sinusulat mo siya, emotionless ka. Okay? Wala kang emotion kasi unang-una sa lahat, ang research kasi, hindi ka pwede maging bias. Okay? So, Kapag nilagyan mo yan ng emosyon, may tendency minsan na mad- mad-draw in ka dun sa isang side ng sinusulat mo. Okay? So, ganun din. Think of your research as something that needs no emotion for the time being. Write it down. Okay? Business as usual. Okay? Focus on the paper. Number four, plan, 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 then write, write, write. Okay? Um, ano tong plan, 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 and write, write, write? So, mahilig tayo na uh, pag sinabi ng teacher or sinabi ng, ng advisor mo, okay, you produce, uh, next week you have to submit your manuscript for chapter one. Okay? Ang gagawin natin agad ay uh, harap sa computer, you open yung window, yung uh, MS Word or Google Docs, tapos papanoorin yung cursor na nagbibig. Okay? Hanggang sa magsusulat, tapos, after magsulat, bumurahin. Susulat ulit, tapos bumurahin. Okay. Hindi po ganun ang research. Okay? You start with a plan. Paano? Paano mo gagawin yung research problem, yung research project mo? So, it involves brainstorming. Okay? Pag-usapan ninyo, oh, ito yung kailangan natin tapusin for this week. Chapter 1 daw. May rationale, may ganito, may research problem, may statement of objectives, merong Um, scope and limitation. Okay, fine. Lima kayo sa grupo, tatlo kayo sa grupo, dalawa kayo sa grupo. Okay. Ito lang ang tip ko sa mga researchers, especially kung groups. Huwag niyong hatiin. No? Huwag niyong chop-chopin per parts. 
sa inyo yung mga topic, yung mga subtopics ng chapter na yun. Kasi unang una sa lahat, kung ah, halimbawa, kung gumawa ng background of the study, tapos ang gumawa ng statement of the problem ay yung isang ka-groupmates ko, o isang ka-groupmate ko, may, may, may chance ah, na dahil hindi namin siya sabay ginawa, magkaiba yung lumalabas doon sa background towards doon sa pinuprove ng uh, doon sa in-state na research problem. So, um, ang advice ko dyan, kung kayo ay susulat ng research, gawin nyo siya na magkakasama. Or kung hindi naman possible, particularly ngayon, hindi pwede magkakasama, there's the technology that you can use. You have your FB Messenger, you have your Google Meet, you have other meeting apps that you can use para makapag-usap kayo, magkakagupo. Okay? So, yun. Planuhin muna ng maigi kung paano siya isusulat and then saka kayo ngayon magsulat. Ngayon, in the sense na na-feel ninyo na habang sinusulat nyo siya may mali, huwag nyo munang isipin yung mali. Just continue writing. Okay? The revision part is, um, tawag dito, let the revision part uh, be done together with your research advisor. Okay? So, okay lang yun kahit may mali yung papel. Okay? Tayo mga research advisors naman, please be open for mistakes. Huwag yung pinagawa mo tong content na to, tapos hindi yan yung in-expect mong dumating, inapin na galita mo ng estudyante mo. Huwag pong ganun. Okay? Unang-una sa lahat, nandyan sila para mag-aral. Hindi sila nandyan para pagalitan. Okay? So, uh, one way of correcting their their mistakes is for you to actually help them along the way. Okay? Next, you set a personal deadline but do not be hard on yourself. Sabi ko nga po kanina, ang research ay hindi minamadali. At ang research ay parang isang artwork o isang masterpiece na kailangan talaga ng oras. Okay? So, pwede po tayo mag-set ng personal deadlines natin na okay, bye bye next week. Dapat meron ng chapter. After three weeks, dapat tapos ko na yung level of literature ko. Pwede naman po yun. Walang problema po. However, don't be too hard on yourself. Kung sa tingin mo yung sinet mong deadlines ay hindi realistic, wala pong pagkakamali o hindi po pagkakamali na i-adjust yun. Okay? Huwag mo nga lang paabutin sa susunod na semester sa susunod na academic year kasi for sure, incomplete ang grade mo. So, yun ang iwasan lang natin. No? Set the, the, the right deadlines. Okay? Then, number six, understand that done is better than perfect. Yun yung sinasabi ko kanina. Mas mahalaga natapos mo yung research. Kung hindi mo siya natapos, wala, mawawala yung opportunity for you to present that knowledge, that that idea to your audience or to your participants, to, uh, to your audience or to your readers. Okay? Yun yung mahalaga doon. Hindi mahalaga na perfecto ang research mo. Hindi mahalaga na, na sobrang galing or sobrang ganda ng research methodology mo. Sobrang sobrang ganda ng pagpapaliwanag mo or sobrang linaw ng, ng recommendations mo sa study mo. Hindi yung mahalaga. Okay? Ang mahalaga natapos mo yung research. Bakit? Kasi pag humarap ka naman sa panel, kahit sabihin mong hindi perfecto yung research mo, or kahit sabihin mong perfecto na sa paningin mo yung research mo, meron at meron pa rin itatanong at ikikriticize ang panel sa'yo. Kasi ang research ko, it depends on how people are going to see your paper, or how go or people are going to understand the contents of your paper based on their perspective. So meron at meron pa rin pa Hindi pwedeng wala. Okay? And number seven, celebrate small successes. Okay? Hindi masama na mag-celebrate after submitting chapter one or after finishing the survey or after you finish reviewing at least 50 related literatures. Hindi po masama yun. Okay? Celebrate small successes. Bakit? Kasi it boosts your morale na, uy, natapos ko tong milestone na to, let's celebrate. And that will keep you motivated to finish the next milestones. Kasi meron kang reward. You have developed a reward system for yourself. Okay? And number eight, 
embrace your imperfections as well as your critiques. You always have to um, embrace the things, the, the, your, the, your weaknesses, no? You always have to embrace your weaknesses. And aside from that, you always need to have an open mind for criticisms from your panelists, from the readers, from your advisors, and from anyone who's going to read your paper. So, yun lang. No? So, medyo sa tingin ko, um, ang pagsusulat ng research kasi ay um, bahagi talaga siya ng pagiging isang miyembro ng akademya. Okay? Whether you are a college student, um, tawag ito, a student from the graduate school, particularly the master's degree, meron din yung graduate. And lalo na kung kayo ay nagdo-doktor, katulad ko. No? So, we have dissertation writing. So, mas comprehensive compared to thesis writing. So, continue po yun. Continuous lang po yun. And kung iniisip ninyo na after nyo matapos ng thesis ninyo sa college and you go to the industry, wala ng research, nagkakamali po kayo kasi when you work in different hotels, resorts, airlines, meron at meron pa rin research na sasama. Kahit Paano? It will still be required. And the research skill, or research skills rather, um, can be considered as a 21st century skill. At napakahalaga po yan, isa yun sa mga hinahanap din ng mga employers. Okay? Or kung tatayo ka naman ng business, mahalaga ang, mahalaga ang research para sa sa'yo. Kasi um, you get to know how your business will be placed on a certain competitive environment. Okay? So, yun po, no? If you have any questions, feel free to comment it down below. If you have anything that you want to discuss with me, please feel free to comment it down. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and comment and mag-subscribe ka na sa channel ko. Again, this is Professor J.E. Polycarpio and this is Prof. J.E. Vlogs. See you on my next episode. Class. Dismissed.